what's good y'all welcome back i didn't think this recap would be me talking about a game seven instead of the Celtics events into the finals um it shows you the pain of being a sports fan of teams i envy the people that are just fans of players because you don't have to go through pain like this um obviously there's still a game to play but i feel like most people in the world probably thought the Celtics were winning this game given the fact of how miami played so bad the last two games jimmy butler looked like a shell of himself looked like the knee was really bothering him bam hadn't been aggressive with rob williams on the court it just seemed like it was tailor-made for the Celtics to advance to their first final since 2010 and in typical Celtics fashion up 3-2 at home they blow a game to the miami heat giving me severe flashbacks of 2012 when Braun came into boston up down 3-2 and then put up 45 15 and 5 on like 70 percent shooting and ultimately went on to the finals won his first championship um jimmy butler had probably the best bounce back performance i've ever seen in my life um i know i just mentioned lebron lebron's was probably the best like under pressure legacy game ever but this jimmy butler game given how bad he played in game four and five one of the best bounce back performances i've ever seen last three games i think he had 30 points he had 47 47 i think nine rebounds eight assists and was getting whatever he wanted 47 points 47 points um you can't make that up man you can't it wasn't just jimmy though because a lot of guys came to play for miami but you got to give flowers where they're due given how he looks so hurt i said that last video i don't give out the injury excuse if you're playing but he literally did not look healthy um he was just airballing shots it, he looked very very unhealthy the last couple of games but in this game his bounce looked there his he had a good like little hop in his step. He was getting to the mid-range shot. He was being aggressive. He knew he had to go all out for them to win this game. And he did that. He hit some very, very, very tough shots. Very tough shots, man. Like you, there was no coverage that Boston could have threw at him to be a, that would have been effective. He was getting whatever he wanted. And sometimes when that happens, you just got to tip the cap. You really do, man. Jimmy was outstanding. Kyle Lowry, after being pitiful the last couple games, hit some big time shots he had a big time three down the stretch which was huge because miami went down three after having to lead most of the game and he had a big three ended up fouling out but he had 18 and 10 i think or 16 and 10 something like that don't have the stats in front of me he was amazing um max Struess had a nice third quarter run after being garbage the last couple games had a nice third quarter run hit some big shots in that third quarter that kind of broke the game wide open and then you know Miami just so sound, man. P.J. Tucker doing his thing. Bam was better. He was better. I don't have the final stats in front of me, but he was better. Um, my Yeah, but it was really, it was a Jimmy Butler show. It was a Jimmy Butler show, man. That's one of the best performances I've ever seen. I've seen a lot of great games. Um, I've been watching basketball since I was nine years old. I've seen a lot of great games. But that was one of the best. Facing elimination in the conference finals. Not being 100% down three two man in boston tough place to play and he goes out gives you one of the best performances that you can ask for in a playoff game man this this was a crazy game um yeah i don't even really know like where to start man i saw a lot of people on twitter alluding to the officiating um more so celtics fans and me being a celtics fan I, but y'all know me i keep it a thousand i keep it a thousand with y'all at all times and the refing was bad but it was bad both ways like it was not it was not one-sided even though the Celtics shot more free throws I think they did maybe it ended up being a little more even it was very very evenly officiated but poorly officiated um if that makes sense it was just no in, no consistencies with calls one minute they're calling a lot of ticky tacks then they're not calling anything um I mean, if you as so much as, you know, lay a finger on somebody, it's a foul. It was both ways, though. It's not it was not one sided towards Miami. There were stretches where Miami were getting all the calls and there were stretches where Boston was getting all the calls. It's just how it was. Very poorly officiated game. I want to see what that two minute report looks like, because it was just a badly officiated game. But that's not really I can't say that's what won the game for Miami. I can't say that, man. Jimmy had a legendary performance. So you can't just look at the refereeing and be like, that's what happened. Um, you can more so look at maybe, you know, Jalen Brown missing two free throws with uh, in a tie game with, I think, about two minutes left. You can look at that. Jalen Brown missing two free throws. You can look at that more so than the officiating. I mean, Jalen Brown, man, um, that's my guy. I think everybody that knows me knows I'm a big Jalen Brown fan. 
Um, not just because he's a Celtic, just because I'm a fan of his game. And he's been so up and down in this series, even though he's been the Celtics' leading scorer in this playoff series in the conference finals. It's been so in a, inefficient, or not inefficient, but inconsistent. Because, you know, one game or one moment in the game, he's just playing bad. You know, can't dribble, turning the ball over. You know, Twitter's going crazy on him. And then all of a sudden, boom, he hits a big third quarter spurt, scores like 12, 15 points really explosive and stuff like that and then you have moments like tonight where it's just not there all consistently then he has a 40 point game it's just all over the place for him very up and down and like that's i was just on the phone with my dad we was talking about the game and you know i've been i've been kind of saying with the celtics is like you know like last year or the year before my thing would be like well they're young you know they're only 23 24 like they still got time but at a certain point it's like You've been in these situations since you were 19 years old. You've been in conference finals basically your entire career. Tatum Brown, Marcus Smart, Al Horford since he's been in Boston. Y'all have been in conference finals basically since you got here. You guys have been playing big, high-level playoff basketball since you got here. So it's like the fact that you come out in this game, and I mentioned Jimmy Butler was outstanding, but you come out in this game, you had a chance to win the game even with Jimmy Butler's amazing performance. You come out in this game, and you just – play with us you don't play with that sense of urgency you know that's what separates good teams from great teams and great teams from championship teams you see the warriors in their series which i know i didn't do a recap on them um winning events to their to the nba finals sorry about that but you you see them game five like they knew we gotta we gotta close this series out we gotta close this series out they did that they have that killer championship instinct instinct lebron james he does that kobe bryant he does that michael jordan he does that you don't give teams life you don't give teams like the miami heat another life because this team the heat culture is real they got that dog in them um i know that's a meme going around twitter but they, they really just have that dog in them man and a team like that you don't want to give them a second chance you know you you can't do that and i think that's you know obviously the series isn't over but i think that's just what separates i think that's the next step that the Celtics have to take and whether they can take that now or not, it's like, you know, to be seen. But you just can't keep giving teams life. You know, it almost cost you in the last series giving Giannis and them a chance. And it could cost you here. Now you got to go back to Miami and win a game seven. You know, it's not promising, man. Really like PTSD flashbacks of 2012, man. Like, Jimmy was incredible, bro. You know, got to tip the cap, bro. But, you know, I, I was, my dad was saying on the phone, he's like, the Celtics are terrible front runners. And that's true. It seems like every time... Um, all of a sudden, people are like, oh, yeah, the Celtics are definitely winning this series. Or, you know, it seems like every time that happens or everybody puts expectations on them, they fold. They fold. They got a lead, they fold. Close game, they fold. It always seems like that's the case, man. It's like a, it's the same old story, man. Just a different, it's the same old story. It's just a new season, basically. Like, that's all it is. Um, obviously, the series isn't over. I think my emotions after the game, I was telling my friends, like, man, this this, this stuff is over. Like, <laughs> there's no way you go to Miami and win game seven. But it's not over. Um, Boston hasn't lost consecutive games this postseason. Um, they've shown they can win in Miami. Miami had a very good shooting night, which has been very inconsistent in this postseason run. So we'll see what that happen, how that plays out in game seven. But, man, you get 22 points from Derek White. That's just a game you got to win, man. It really is. Um, Jason Tatum was good for three quarters. And then fourth quarter, he just decided to not take shots. And I saw what he was trying to do. I'm not an NBA coach. I'm obviously not the player of Jason, of Jason Tatum's caliber. Never was. Not in my wildest dreams would I ever be a Jason Tatum. Um, he's a super talented dude. I've raved about him plenty of times. Criticized him plenty of times. Um, and I think what he kind of got lost in tonight in the fourth quarter was trying so hard to get the switch on the max Struess. um basketball is a game of matchups it is but miami eric spolster they're too smart to leave max Struess on an island with jason tatum with their season on the line they're too smart to do that so even if they even if they got the switch even if tatum got the switch they were sending a double team where they were shading him basically forcing him to give the ball up and the way Jalen Brown was playing, he wasn't really a viable option. Marcus Smart didn't shoot the ball well. Al Horford, I think, only hit one shot the entire game or one jumper the entire game. Um, the only guy that was giving you really good offense was Derek White. And 
You know, Tatum was making the right plays. But me personally, the way I was watching this game, first half, really through three quarters, Tatum was getting whatever he wanted on P.J. Tucker. We know P.J. Tucker's a great defender. He's going to get max effort all points of time. But he was Tatum was getting whatever he wanted on P.J. Tucker. P.J. Tucker has a tendency to get baked, but he's not going to stop. He's still going to be there. But <laughs> KD's shown it. Tatum was showing it in this game. Like, he was getting to his spots. He was getting whatever he wanted. He was efficient. I think he was like... 8 for 12 or 9 for 12. Like he was stupid efficient in this game. But fourth quarter, he was trying so hard to attack Max Struess that they were sending double teams. They weren't allowing him to get into his offense, so he just was having to pass. And then that led to some turnovers. Guys were missing shots. Um, I mentioned the Brown missed two free throws. You know, offensive foul here. Not getting defensive. Re it was just a little bit of everything led to this, lo led to this loss, man. Um tough one for sure because i think they they look like a team that thought the series was over i think they thought miami was just gonna lay down for him and you know just you know give them the win but no nah, miami's not that type of team we knew that and now we got a game seven and i, I hope i didn't miss any points that i wanted to talk about didn't write any notes this is just kind of like me an hour after the game collecting my thoughts it'll be tomorrow morning by saturday morning by the time y'all see this but man game seven I, I don't even know who to expect i was expecting to be previewing the finals i guess i kind of got caught up in that in that sauce too man but um yeah um for both teams i'll be interested to see how i'm sorry if my chair is making noise man but i'll be eager to see how jimmy butler looks in game seven because it's two days away he just gave out 45 minutes tonight, max effort. Um, hopefully that knee is 100%. And I say that hopefully because even though I'm a Celtics fan, I don't like seeing guys hurt. I will never wish an injury on somebody because that's just completely foolish. And at the end of the day, if we're going to get a game seven, it might as well be a good one. <laughs> it might as well be a good one at this point. So hopefully the knee is back to as close to 100% as possible for Jimmy. Um, the way he played tonight, it looks like it was more than 100%. But hopefully... You know, they treat them right. Make sure that knee's good to go for Sunday. Um, yeah, I, I think um, for Game 7, um, you know, Boston obviously got to find a coverage for Jimmy Butler. Um, if Miami's seeing shots like this, they're going to be tough to beat because the defense is so good. Um, and the way Jalen Brown's been so inconsistent, that gives them an advantage, man. It does. Um, we'll see. Role players always play better on the road. Um, I don't I don't think Miami's played a game seven with this core, so it's going to be very interesting to see how they respond to that. Um, the Celtics just played a game seven last series, but they played that at home. So we'll see how they play on the road. This team has not, this Celtics core has not played a game seven on the road. They played a game seven in the bubble, but they have not played a game seven on the road. They played one at home against LeBron, but they have not played one on the road. So it's going to be interesting. It's going to be very interesting, man. Um, yeah, T Tatum has to be better down the stretch. He's got to be the closer that, you know, we all believed he's turned into. Um, he just has to be that killer mentality, man. Like if you're going to go out, you know, I want to go out with Jason Tatum taking the shots or at least being aggressive, getting downhill, um, especially the way this game was being called. I don't know I'm getting back to game six, but the way this game was being called, if Tatum would have just put his head down, try and get to the bucket, he probably would have got the call because that's just how spotty the refereeing was. So he's got to be better. Um, Really, everybody other than Derek White has to be better. Derek White played the game, not of his life, but for the Celtics, that's the best performance I've seen Derek White. He hit like three three-pointers and ones. Was getting stiff. Best game I've seen Derek White play. Best game I've seen Derek White. Shout out to Derek White. Best game I've seen him play. And you wasted that opportunity. So everybody outside of Derek White has to be better. Um, I do think he may coach a really good game. I feel like he was making the proper rotations. Didn't keep Payne Pritchard on the court too long because they were trying to attack him. Um, when Derek White was cooking, instead of, you know, subbing him out for Rob Williams, he kept Derek White in. And it's just a matter of, you know, a few possessions, some missed free throws. And that was really the game. So I think he made Coach a really good game. It's just now he's got to go into another game seven, his second already in his first playoff run. So we'll see, man. We will see. Um, it's not. It's, it's going to be a dog fight, man. I don't think... Um, I don't think it's over for the Celtics, like how I felt right after the game, but it's going to be a dog fight, man. It's, that's just the heat. That's just how Miami goes. These teams are so evenly matched. It's going to be a fight. And then Golden State's going to be very, very, very well rested. 
<laughs> they just sitting at home, like, chilling, resting up, getting healthy, getting Gary Payton back. Man, uh, these teams might be playing for second place. I don't want to say that, though, but... <laughs> Man, because my only thing is, I'm going to say this real quick because me and my dad were talking about this too. Um, the way these, the Heat and Celtics play, they just go through spurts where they just look kind of bad at times. And the way Golden State operates, they will take advantage of that. And they often don't go through like really dry spells. And at some point, they're going to start hitting shots. It's just a matter of the fact. They're too experienced, too seasoned, and they have too many good players. So whoever gets out of this series, it's going to be an interesting matchup for sure. But I just can't believe we got a game seven. I can't. Um, we'll see. I'm not making a pick. Hoping the Celtics win. But at the very least, I'm just hoping it's a great game. So, um, we'll see. I didn't say at the beginning. Leave a like. Subscribe if you are new. Um, I'll probably catch y'all after game seven to talk about either <laughs> either an excited Celtics fan or a depressed Celtics fan. Um, we'll see what we get, man. I'm just glad I was able to record this video because I didn't feel like it right after the game ended.